The Biden administration has reached a landmark water deal with several western states to stave off an immediate crisis with the Colorado River and the communities that depend on it. William Brangham has a look at what's at stake. Jeff, the Colorado River has been profoundly affected by a historic mega drought. That's meant that Lake Powell and Lake Mead, the huge reservoirs fed by the river, could drop so low it could endanger water supplies for agriculture as well as for cities like Los Angeles and Phoenix. This new deal puts those risks on hold for now. California, Arizona, and Nevada will agree to take less water from the river. In exchange, the federal government will pay a billion dollars to key players in those states. To help us understand what this all will mean, we're joined by Luke Runyon of KUNC Public Radio in Colorado. He also hosts the podcast called Thirst Gap. Luke, thank you so much for being here. Could you just tell us a little bit, what are the contours of this deal? What did these states agree to? These states essentially agreed to take less water from the Colorado River. Uh, so we're looking at California, Arizona, and Nevada. Uh, they have agreed to uh, significant cutbacks to their use over the next three years. And really, this is an attempt in to kind of live within a shrinking river. Climate change has been ravaging the Colorado River for more than 20 years now. It's a significantly smaller river. And uh, what we found is that we need to use a lot less water in order to match the declining supply uh, that we have in this in the Southwest. And do we know who those cuts that they've now agreed to are going to fall on? Like, who who is this going to sting? Some of the cuts are gonna hit agriculture, and agriculture is the single largest use of the river's water in the Southwest. A lot of that comes in the form of uh, the sprawling agricultural areas in Southern California, around Yuma, Arizona. Uh, and those farmers have been insulated from, from, from some of these cuts over you know, the last several years. That's maybe not gonna be the case anymore because they're gonna be getting payments from the federal government in order to use less. I know that the federal government had earlier asked these states and others to come up with a, a broader sort of meta agreement over how to apportion the river. This is not that deal, correct? This is really a short-term solution to get the river's negotiators to 2026, which is when its current managing guidelines expire. Uh, so this is not a solution to the river's fundamental gap between water supply and demand. This just builds slightly more stability and certainty into water supplies for those uh, those states, California, Arizona, and Nevada. But there are still many more hard conversations to be had about how you go about living with a smaller Colorado River. And the states ha haven't had that extremely difficult conversation yet. They've just had a slightly hard one, and they'll have to have a harder one coming up. Right. They've bought themselves a couple more years. Um, we know also that the West got this godsend of a tremendous historic snowpack. How much of that helps understand how they got to this interim agreement? It's hugely important. Uh, we would be having a very different conversation right now if the West had had a even moderately dry winter this past winter. The Colorado River is mostly snow fed. We had a tremendous amount of snowpack in the Rocky Mountains this year. And that decreased the sense of urgency among the people who negotiate on the river. Lastly, just picking up on this point you've been making, the, the subtitle of your excellent podcast is Learning to Live with Less on the Colorado River. And as you're saying, with climate change and this ongoing drought, do you think that policymakers understand that these stresses are not going away? I think to the people who are negotiating the river's future, they've come to terms with the fact that the river is smaller and is going to get smaller. Uh, and really the way forward is using less. There are some technological fixes that can uh, make up supply gaps in some areas, you know, like desalination or, uh, you know, uh, other sorts of techn technologies. But really the future of this basin is about learning to live with less. It's about reducing our demand, that's what we have control over, is uh, deciding how much water we actually use from the Colorado River. And that's where a lot of the focus of the conversation is right now, including this deal that we saw today. 
All right, that is Luke Runyon of KUNC Public Radio. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me.